Quiz 17.5 has to do with uh, formation reactions. These are reactions where a metal cation will uh, form a complex with uh, one or more ligands. And the interesting thing about formation reactions is that they tend to be highly product favored. That's the exact opposite of our weak acid, weak base, and sparingly soluble um, salts. And so we have to handle it in a, in a slightly different way. So anyway, let's go to question one. Uh, copper two ions will form a copper uh, tetraamine complex ion with a KF equal to 1.7 times 10 to the negative 13. So let's write the chemical equation right here. Cu2 plus plus 4 NH3. And I'll leave off the phases just for board space. These are all aqueous. Um, and that's going to form the copper tetraamine complex. Um, and uh, the Kf of 1.7 times 10 to the negative 13. Sorry. <laughs> See, I'm in such a habit of having uh, reactant favored reactions. That's 1.7 times 10 to the positive 13th. This one is product favored. So 1.7 times 10 to the positive 13th is going to equal the concentration of the complex over the concentration of copper ions and the concentration of NH3, ammonia, raised to the fourth power. Um, and so <coughs> um, let's actually uh, run through this. Uh, naively with an ice table and see what sort of problems we get. Uh, so if I just do an ice table like we have been doing um, we'll have no copper and uh, it looks like we start with a 0 0.2 molar in copper 2 plus 0 0.5 molar in the amine and so we're going to have minus x minus 4x and plus x. And here we'll have uh, x, 0 0.5 minus 4x, 0 0.2 minus x. And um, so we'll have 1.7 times 10 to the 13th is equal to x over 0 0.2 minus x and 0 0.5 minus 4x raised to the uh, fourth power. Uh, now what we are accustomed to doing is assuming that x is small, so we can ignore these changes from initial concentrations and greatly simplify the math. However, uh, looking at this formation constant, we can assume that x is going to be quite large. In fact, probably one of these two will end up being a limiting reactant and it will be almost completely consumed. We certainly cannot ignore x uh, here. Um, now, uh, if it were a simpler formation uh, reaction, like the stoichiometry was just one to one, then perhaps we could solve this through brute force algebra. But you can see that this is going to ultimately be um, an equation with x to the power of 5, and there is no quadratic formula for equations with x to the power of 5. Um, and, uh, and I won't go through it, but you might say, well, still, but still, I can solve this using um, algebraic uh, solver like Wolfram Alpha or by solving it graphically on my graphing calculator. Uh, um, actually, why don't we go ahead and try that? I'll pause this and, and I'll get that all set up and we can see the result because it is interesting. Okay, so I went ahead and I went on Wolfram Alpha and um, translated this equation into Wolfram Alpha you see right there. Um, and when we scroll down to look at the results, uh, this is a, um, a function with x to raised to many powers, and so there's more than one result. Um, and we get uh, values of, oh, that's actually kind of interesting. 
What's up with these two? Two, four, six. Um, well, these two uh, are a surprise to me, and I, I'm a little bit curious what's going on with them. Um, <clears throat> but uh, this one right here, where x is about equal to 0 0.2. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Sorry. Um, uh, so this one where x is equal to 0 0.2, well, that's going to give you a negative concentration of ammonia because we have 0 0.5 minus 4 times x. That's not going to work. And I'm guessing that this one right here is going to give you a non-physical, nonsensical answer as well. 0 0.5 minus 4 times 0 0.125 is going to be just more than 0 0.5. Um, uh, this one right here x equal to 0 0.12486, that would probably work. And so in this case, we're okay. Um, you could have solved it using Wolfram. If the uh, formation constant were much larger than it is, like uh, I should have just done this on question number two, where the formation constant is on the order of 10 to the 21st. But anyway, if, uh, if uh, x were much larger, if the formation constant were much larger, then the value of x that you get out from um, this equation would be equal to um, one-fifth, uh, sorry, would be equal to 0.5 divided by 4. In other words, when you perform that subtraction, you would get a zero concentration of ammonia. Um, it comes down to being a, a matter of um, not carrying enough sig figs. That there's uh, no calculator that by default will carry enough sig figs, although it is always technically possible to solve in this way. I'll go ahead and actually do this again on the next problem because uh, um, uh, then it will, it will make more sense in that context. Um, anyway, okay. So we've got a problem in short. Well, think back to the lecture and the idea of a, a rolling ball that will settle in the same valley, whether you start it on the left side or the right side. And the idea is that we're going to um, uh, sort of force this reaction over to the product side as far as it can go, and then we'll allow it to react backward again. And now what we have is a small change and that's going to simplify all sorts of things. So we're going to make a BCA table. BCA before change and after. Here we have 0 0.2 and here we have 0 0.500 and 0. And uh, you'll have to uh, do a little bit of limiting reactant math here, but uh, we need four times as much ammonia compared to the copper and we don't have that, we have just uh, two and a half times. And so that means ammonia is going to be our limiting reactant. So we will lose all of that ammonia. And how much copper do we lose? Well, we lose one quarter of that amount. What is 0.5 divided by four? That is minus 0 0.125. And we will gain plus 0 0.125. So we get is uh, an amount of zero, and then uh, 0 0.125, and uh, 0.2 minus 0 0.0125 is 0 0.075. And what we've done is pushed the reaction as far toward product as we can, um, considering the limiting reactant. And now, I, I like to draw a second ice table on to the right of this, and that's what I've done in the key, but um, I don't have enough chalkboard space here, so I'll just reuse this table. Erase these values, and what this is going to become is an ice table now. We'll take these uh, uh, values and put them in now as the starting values. 0, 0 0.075. Okay. So those were copied from the BCA table onto our new ice table. And now uh, we know that the reaction is going to go toward the left because we have zero ammonia left. And so we'll have minus x plus 4x 
and uh, plus x. And now we can say 1.7 times 10 to the 13th is equal to 0 0.125 minus x over 0 0.075 plus x. And 4x raised to the fourth power. Now we, now we can assume that x is going to be small. Um, it's product favored. We've got it on the product side, so it'll go backward just a tiny amount. And if x is small, then both of those can be assumed to be equal to 0. 1.125 minus a tiny number is still 0 0.125. 0 0.0075 plus a tiny number is still 0 0.0075. And now, even though this uh, equation has like big powers, x to the fourth and such, uh, we can actually just solve this pretty easily algebraically. x is in the end going to equal the fourth root, which I'll just represent as raising to the exponent of one fourth. Uh, that's going to be 0 0.125 divided by 0 0.075 times that 4 to the 4th from there, and uh, 1.7 times 10 to the 13th. We'll raise all that to the power of 1 fourth to take a fourth root. And what we get in the end is that x is equal to um, 1.4. relative to our smallest number here. Uh, it's less than 1%. Uh, it's 10 to the negative second. This is 10 to the negative fourth. And so it's less than 1%. And um, so our math uh, simplification there is valid. And in the end, that gives us equilibrium concentrations of 0 0.075. And here we have uh, 4 times x. In other words, 5.6 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. And here we just still have the 0 0.125 molar. Those are the equilibrium concentrations. OK, so question two is just a, another one of these. And we'll solve it in exactly the same way. Just some good practice. Okay, so we have um, uh, the reaction of uh, silver ion with cyanide ion. So you have Ag plus plus 2Cn minus in equilibrium with Ag Cn2 minus. And uh, we'll do the BCA table. Um, and we're starting, oh, right, um, so uh, question two does introduce a little uh, bit of extra work at the beginning. So we describe how we prepare this mixture by taking 25 milliliters of 0 0.075 molar uh, silver nitrate. And so what is our uh, initial concentration of silver? Well, we're going to have... Um, that volume of 25 milliliters times its original concentration. But now we need to uh, divide that by um, the total volume. So the 25 milliliters of silver nitrate is combined with 40 milliliters of sodium uh, cyanide. And so this will be over 65 milliliters. In the end, we get uh, an Ag plus concentration equal to 0 0.0288 molar. And I'm carrying an extra digit there just because it's intermediate. So we'll put this here, 0 0.0288. And we have to do the same thing with the cyanide. So uh, the Cn minus concentration is going to equal, it's 40 milliliters times 
0 0.100 molar divided by that 65 milliliters. This is just a dilution because we have um, uh, we've combined two different solutions into one. Uh, and that's going to give me a CN minus concentration of 0 0.0, where is it, 385 molar. Okay, 0 0.0385. Just a little extra curveball. You need to be able to uh, naturally and intuitively handle things like this before you can get to the um, uh, calculating uh, equilibrium positions and such. Okay, um, and our formation constant is uh, 1 times 10 to the 21st. And um, what that means is that we have only one sig fig. Uh, we really just don't know the order of magnitude. Um, so, uh, uh, actually it says 1.0. Okay, I guess it just happens to be 1.0 uh, times 10 to the 21st. And that is going to equal our complex concentration over our silver concentration and our cyanide ion concentration. Okay. Now let's pause just a moment here. Um, and uh, I think maybe now it would actually be instructive to uh, solve this uh, with Wolfram alpha as if it were just a, a regular equilibrium reaction. So what we would get is 10 to the 21st is equal to x over 0 0.0288 minus x times 0 0.0385 minus 2x. Oh, and this needs to be squared. And this needs to be squared. That's probably off camera, sorry. Yeah, it is. I swear I'm getting better at this slowly, but surely. OK, so we would have uh, 10 to the 21st equal to x over 0 0.0288 minus x and 0 0.0385 minus 2x, and that is squared. Okay, so let's jump over to our uh, Wolfram Alpha. 1e negative, oh no, positive 21. 1e21 1 is equal to x divided by 0.0288 minus x and uh, 0.0385 minus 2x. And that is squared. Oops, and I need another divide here to keep it in the denominator. All right, and again, we're going to get uh, several results here. Uh, it looks like there's two, uh, on, and 0 0.0288 is non-physical because that would give us a negative concentration of the cyanide ion. But here, 0 0.0.1925, if I take 0 0.0835 minus 2 times 0 0.0.1925, that's going to give me a zero concentration for cyanide ion. And so you see here, even Wolfram Alpha has failed us. Um, it's given us uh, a value of x that um, we cannot plug back into the equilibrium expression because it would give us a zero concentration of cyanide, which of course uh, it, we can't divide by zero uh, when we try to plug that back into the equilibrium expression. We know that the cyanide concentration is going to be very small but it is not going to be zero. Well, we can go ahead and use this number, though. Um, that's actually uh, going to uh, be an indicator of, <laughs> of uh, which is the limiting reactant. It's the cyanide. And so that's going to be uh, negative 0 0.0385. And we'll have, um, we'll have uh, half that amount, so plus 
0 0.0, 0, what was it? I'm going to go back to Wolfram Alpha for half a second. 0, 0.1925. 0 0.01925 and minus 0 0.01925. Um, and this is going to give us after concentrations of 0 0.0192. Five and uh, zero and um, zero point zero zero nine six three nine six three. There we are. Now we can uh, take these uh, after values and plug them in as our new initial values for an ice table. So we have a 0 0.00963 and 0 and 0 0.01925. And here we'll get uh, minus x plus 2x plus x. And now our equilibrium expression is going to look quite a lot different. So we'll come back here to reflect our new ice table, what we're going to have is 0.01925 minus x. And here we'll have 0.00963 plus x. And we'll have 2x squared. And just like before, we can say uh, the x is going to be very small. We have a very large equilibrium constant and we've already pushed the reaction as far toward products as it can go so we can assume that those are small enough that we can call them zero and here x is going to equal the square root of 0 0.9925 over 0 0.00963 times 4 that's from the 2 squared times 10 to the 21st. That'll give us a value of x equal to 2.24 times 10 to the negative 11. And I think I rounded differently on the key than I did here, but um, hopefully we'll get the same values in the end. So this is going to be uh, 0 0.0 uh, one nine because we only get two sig figs um, and this is going to be 2.2 times 10 to uh, the negative 11th times 2 because it's plus 2x so that will be uh, 4.48 or in other words 4.5 times 10 to the negative 11th and here we'll have uh, 0 0.0096. There we go. Those are our three equilibrium concentrations for the silver cyanide system. All right, we're nearly done. So question three is one that I really like, although um, Last, last year when I first gave this quiz, I didn't make that bonus question a bonus. And it was so hard and it was at a busy time of the year, I didn't even solve it myself. This year I have solved it, but I recognize how hard it was, so I made it a bonus. Anyway, um, so PBI2 is a sparingly soluble salt, so you'll have PBI2 in equilibrium with PB2 plus, plus 2I minus. And uh, so you'll have um, a solubility product where Ksp is equal to the Pb2 plus and the I minus squared. 
Um, and you could calculate the molar solubility of lead iodide just like we've done before. However, uh, lead 2 plus ion and I minus ion can also further participate in complexation chemistry. And so we can have Pb2 plus plus 4I minus, and that will be in equilibrium with PbI4 2 minus. Oh, yeah, I found a typo, uh, but that's all right. Uh, PbI4 2 minus. And this is going to have a Kf equal to concentration of PbI4 2 minus over the concentration of Pb2 plus and the concentration of I minus, this time raised to the fourth power. And uh, Ksp is small, small 9.8 times 10 to the negative ninth. So there won't be very much lead and iodide, and iodide in solution uh, based on that. Uh, but uh, Kf is decently large, it's 30,000. And what does all this have to do with uh, the molar solubility of lead iodide? Well, you can think of this as a two-step process. First, some of the lead iodide dissolves, and then some of those ions are going to form this complex. And when they do, they will have reduced the concentration of lead 2 plus and I minus. And so that means that by Le Chatelier's principle, we will have removed product here. And so even more lead iodide will dissolve. And then that will react and even more will dissolve. And eventually this will reach a, a steady state where both of these systems are in equilibrium. But the concentration, but the molar solubility of the lead iodide will be increased because uh, as it's dissolving here, well, that product keeps getting consumed in this reaction until this reaction finally settles down um, and, and uh, the lead solu solubilization reaction will stop as well. Okay, so it will increase the molar solubility because it essentially removes these products. Um, however, how much it increases that solubility by depends a lot. So uh, you can look at my key here for how I solved it. I'm not going to go into the uh, details of that. I'll tell you ultimately I had to rely on Wolfram Alpha. Um, I couldn't even have solved this graphically on my calculator because it's a two-dimensional problem. Instead of looking for the intersection of two lines, what we're looking for is the intersection between two different uh, uh, planes or surfaces, two different functional surfaces where these two surfaces touch. Um, and uh, it turns out there are two solutions. One of them is perhaps not very uh, surprising. I'll go ahead and just erase this and let you know what the solutions are. And you can plug them back into equilibrium expressions and prove to yourself that they do work, um, even if uh, th I'm, there might not be quite enough sig figs. But, um, so Pb2 plus concentration, I minus concentration, and the complex concentration. So we have uh, one solution where, um, uh, give me just a moment. Uh, we have one uh, solution where the PB2 plus concentration is 0 0.00135 molar. And the I minus concentration is just double that, 0 0.00270. And the PBI minus concentration is 2.137 times 10 to the negative ninth. Now with such a large formation constant, that may surprise you. But that I minus in the denominator of the formation reaction's equilibrium expression is raised to the fourth power. And so um, if I minus is less than one and it gets raised to the fourth power, that can have a really strong impact. Uh, and so you see that actually this PBI4 complex uh, does not really contribute much to the molar solubility of lead iodide. It's a very, very tiny, tiny effect. However, there is a second solution, 
And this one is wild. Okay, so this one says that the uh, PB2 plus concentration, uh, hold up, let me be very careful here. Um, the PB2 plus concentration is 3.39 times 10 to the negative 15th. And the I uh, minus concentration is going to be 1,000. 700.68 molar. Um, and then the uh, complex concentration is going to be 850.34 molar. And so what's happened here is that uh, you've dissolved so much lead iodide that now we finally have a large amount of our product of the formation reaction. Um, and interestingly, even though we've dissolved a whole ton of lead iodide, we can see 850 moles per liter of lead are in one form or the other in this uh, solution. The actual lead 2 plus concentration is now teeny, teeny, tiny. Now this solution is not practical. I tried to imagine, like, could you ever get the system into this uh, through super saturating with lead iodide, uh, heating it up to dissolve a lot of lead iodide in solution and then cooling it down. And I just, I can't see it happening. These numbers are so outrageous. Um, but uh, it is mathematically possible. And so I, I think that it is physically, uh, uh, a, a physically valid solution. It's like a really interesting thought experiment. Like what if you had a solution that was obeying these uh, uh, equilibrium constants in this way instead of in that way. Okay, um, and that's it for quiz 17.5.